Welcome to uh, Enterprise Nation TV. Thank you for joining us. Um, I know this is a story you've told many times, but can you just briefly go through the, the innocent story? How did it all happen? Well, it was it's a story of friendship. Myself and my two best mates set up the business. We came up with the idea of making smoothies when we were hungover on a snowboarding weekend. We tried. We wanted to make it easy for people to be healthy. We had no idea how to do it, so we just did it from first principles. We bought 500 pounds worth of fruit, we squashed it all up, made a thousand bottles of smoothies, took them to a music festival and sold them from a stall at the music festival. And above that stall we had a sign that said, should we give up our jobs to make these smoothies? And I had a bin that said yes, and a bin that said no, and asked people to buy the drinks, drink them, and then vote with the empty bottles. And we made a commitment to each other's group of friends, if the yes bin was full at the end of the weekend, we'd go in the next day and resign from our jobs. And that yes bin was full, and so we did resign the very next day. So once you had that validation, that great validation, how did you then go about turning it into an actual thing? What were the challenges you faced in those early days? Well, I have to say it was an absolute bloody nightmare <laughs> because we resigned from our jobs and then we're like, oh, and the difference of doing it once for a market stall versus commercially at scale every day. It was extremely difficult, to be perfectly honest, and it took us a lot longer and it was a lot harder than we thought. It was worth it, but trying to find a manufacturer that would take us seriously and work with us and trying to find people that would invest it took about 15 months and it was 15 months mainly being told no and it wasn't possible and it didn't work like that so the reason why we got through it is because we were a team of three so it's one of the things I always say to people it's like team up find a couple of people to do it with it's going to be difficult it's going to be worth it it's going to be really hard so if you do it with a couple of other people you'll get through it um, obviously, you succeeded. It's now it was you know it's a huge brand, and um, you ended up exiting. So, wh wh how did you manage that growth, and why did you make that decision to, to sell to, to Coke? And, and obviously, there was come comments on the fact you sold to Coke. So, what, what, why did you make that decision? Yeah, well, we set, we started the business in '99. We grew it for 10 years. It went extremely well. We had one terrible year in 2008 where. We lost millions of pounds, the business collapsed in size by, we lost a third of our sales over a three month period. We needed cash. Coke did a deal where they bought a small amount of the business, which was brilliant because it, it saved the business. And without selling that bit to Coke, we never would have stayed in business. Then over the next few years, they were clear that they wanted one day to own it. And we, after doing it for 15 years, we felt this was a great opportunity to stand back, let the existing team take over. So Innocent is still run by all the same people that we used to work with. And with Coke's backing, it's gone on to be more and more successful. So it's a real fairy tale for us. It's, we always said we exist for three reasons, to get natural healthy drinks people as many, to as many people and places as possible, to build an ethical supply chain, and thirdly, share some of the profits with the charity. And all those things are making healthy products and making the business environmentally friendly and distributing profits. It's all increased under Coke's ownership because the business has got bigger. So all the things we said we wanted to do, we get to do at a greater scale. So you've judged the moon, you picked the two winners. Why did you end up picking the two that you picked? What do you think other startups and growth businesses can learn from the two winners? Well, the boom winners, amongst a very great set of finalists, firstly, they were businesses that you genuinely felt were going to make society better in some way. Secondly, they'd already got and shown and proven evidence of consumer traction. Thirdly, the, the people running it, they were just super credible. They were believable. There was no big sell. They didn't make big claims. They just explained why they were doing what they were doing, how they were doing it, and we had a real sense of they're the real deal. And that's what you're looking for as an investor. It's like, do I believe it's a good business? Do I believe the team can deliver? And is there that sense of scale and ambition? And they had all three. And just finally, last time, last time we saw you Enterprise Nation was at our Brexit debate. Um, you're a very prominent Remain uh, supporter. Still am. Still are. We've got Brexit. So what, what should happen next in your eyes? Well, I think what should happen is the, the government deserves our full support to negotiate the best possible deal. Um, then what the country deserves is the ability to look at that deal and go, is that what I voted for? There is a very real risk that because the negotiations, quite frankly, are going really badly. In fact, we've had to concede on every single criteria that we said we weren't going to concede on. So whether it's time, money, regulation, 
we've conceded on every point. We therefore need, whether you're a believer or a remainer, you surely will want to see the deal that's agreed before we sign up to it. And so my position now is, let's agree we get a people's vote. Respect the will of the people, get the people to decide when we get see the deal, do we want it or not? Rachel, thank you very much. Thank you.